Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. My name's Eric. And I'm Nicole. Okay, so last time we wanted to determine the heat capacity of a solid. To do this, we started with the Einstein model. The resulting heat capacity worked really well for high temperature, but not so much for the low temperature limit. So with that in mind, our goal today will be to step it up one notch and use the Debye model for heat capacity. How's that different from the Einstein model? Yeah, so Einstein assumed that all the atoms vibrated at the same frequency. At that point, we don't even have a dispersion relationship because we don't even have wave vectors. Each atom just sits there and vibrates without any interaction with its neighbors. With the Debye model, we'll instead invoke a linear isotropic dispersion. In this case, we can plot omega versus the magnitude of our wave vector Q like this. Looks like this doesn't even capture all the details of the ball and spring model from earlier. You're right, it's still a rough approximation, but at least we now have a dispersion with multiple energies. Okay, smarty pants, can you build up the heat capacity for this solid? No problem. Before we tackle heat capacity, we need to determine the energy of our system as a function of temperature. Let's start by writing the energy of our system as an integral over our density of states times the energy of a particular mode determined by h bar omega times the Planck distribution. We'll also multiply the energy by a factor of three because we have two transverse modes and one longitudinal mode for three dimensions. Sounding good so far. Looks like you dropped the zero point energy because you know it's gonna go away in the temperature derivative. Since the only term that depends on temperature is the Planck distribution, we can pull everything else out of the integral. Since we know what the density of states is in 3D, we're just about ready to crank out this integral. But we're missing what our cutoff frequency is. Yeah, so we can figure that out by looking at the total number of modes in the system. We have two transverse and one longitudinal mode per atom, n cells, and then r atoms per cell. But we can also figure out the total number of modes by integrating over the density of states up to this cutoff frequency. And since we know the density of states, the integral is fairly trivial. Setting that equal to 3nr, we get an expression for the omega cutoff that looks like this. Now we have all the components for our heat capacity integral. The exact math is laid out in Cattell, but the important parts are the high and low temperature limits. And at high temperature, we recover 3 kb per atom. That's pretty good stuff. The better news is the low temperature limit has a TQ temperature dependence, which agrees very well with the experiment. So other than the right temperature limits, a pro for the Debye model is the fact that we really only have one free parameter, and that is the slope of dispersion, or the speed of the wave, which we can determine through experiments. The Debye model is still sort of creepy. It gets the heat capacity right at low temperature because we're near the origin of our dispersion where we can treat a sine wave as a line but I'd expect it to be less accurate at intermediate temperatures, where we've started to sample the upper parts of the dispersion. You're absolutely right. At intermediate temperatures, the Debye model is going to be a bit off. Nevertheless, you're going to find that the Debye model is used throughout solid state physics, as it's a nice combination of being a decent approximation and being ridiculously simple. Before we leave today, we have some questions for you all to consider. How do you design a solid with really high or really low heat capacity? And more broadly, why should we even care about the heat capacity in a solid? Are there reasons to think about heat capacity beyond something simple like heat storage? Okay, so next time we're going to develop an expression for thermal conductivity in phonons. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching today's broadcast of Solid State Physics in a Nutshell. See you next time.